everyone, I'm Miranda and welcome to my YouTube channel and welcome to my mum Donna. <laughs> Hello everyone. Who's joining me today for May's comfort book club discussion of Emma by Jane Austen. We've been so excited to discuss the we book this month. Way, yes. And do grab a cup of tea yourself. We've yeah. got a cup of tea or your favourite warm beverage. Yeah. And we also have these delicious strawberry rhubarb and chocolate blondies, which if you'd like the recipe, it's on my blog. I really recommend they these. They are delicious. <laughs> they really are. And custard, right? Is there custard? And custard. Strawberry yeah. rhubarb and custard blondies. Yeah, yeah. With a bit of chocolate too. Yeah. <laughs> <I> can't <laughs> Just go wrong, All can the you? good things. <laughs> mm. 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 So, we have our tea, our sweet treats. We do. <laughs> and we're all set to discuss Emma. Thank you so much for everyone who phoned in a voice message. Yeah, I think Lots was of it great a record ones. number this time? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. quite a few <laughs> messages to fit in, but they're great. That's wonderful. So, thank you very much. And, yes... Emma is one of our favourite Jane Austen books. I mean, Jane Austen is my very favourite writer. Yeah, mine too, I think. Mm. Yeah. And Emma is one of our favourites. Yes. So it's a pleasure to reread this one. I think it's such a great book for early, well, for late spring, early summer. Yes, absolutely. Uh, there are so many great summery scenes there in are. it. But I also think it's a wonderful book for people who enjoy seasonal reading generally because I think you really feel the passing of a whole year in Emma. You it, do. It starts in sort of early September or sometime yeah. in September and then ends the following November, I think. And so you get this real sense of an autumn to an autumn yeah. with balls in the winter and picnics in the and summer. And a Christmas party. And there's a lovely yes, Christmas yes. party. And you really feel the seasons of the year progress in yeah. the book, which I really like. And the I most really recent film... This, this time, actually. Did you? Yes, that, when I reread it, that's this time what I really noticed was uh, the seasonal bits. Yes. Yeah. Well, the most recent film of Emma, the 2021, yeah. really paid attention to it the did. passing seasons too. I do recommend watching that. It was quite interesting yeah. that they really showed the seasons in the film. It was beautifully shot with it too. It yeah. was. Yeah. But they picked that up from the book. Um, and a seasonal reading is so in right now. Yeah. I think that Emma's a great one it is. for that. It is. To sort of take you through the year. But... So many people love Emma. A lot of our comfort book club readers also reread Emma and spoke about the pleasure that they have in that they had in rereading the novel for this month. Emma has also directly affected some of our readers' lives, so I thought it would be fun to share a couple messages um, from two UK-based readers, Deb and Emma. Deb. I think spoke about Emma directly affecting her life yes. in, a, in a very particular way. So let me play her message. Hello, Miranda, Donna and members of the Comfort Book Club. This is Deb from Surrey in the UK. I live near to where the novel Emma is set and we still enjoy picnics on Box Hill. When I first read Emma, I was younger than Harriet Smith. But now I'm approaching the age of Mrs Bates. So this novel's been a lifetime companion. I even tell people I married my husband because he reminds me of Mr Knightley. Oh, that's brilliant. That is lovely. Thank you, Deb. Deb. Yeah, yeah. Yes, and how lovely that you're so familiar with the setting of Emma, which we'll come on to talking about soon. But uh, I think I'd want yeah. to marry someone who reminded me of Mr Knightley he is too. Sort of perfect, he is perfect, isn't he? <laughs> he is very, he's a very likeable character. Yeah. And then another reader, Emma, called in, and you can probably guess how the novel <laughs> affected her life, but let me play Emma's message. Hi, Miranda, Donna, and everybody in the Comfort Book Club. My name's Emma, and I live in the UK. 
Thank you so much, Miranda, for choosing this wonderful book for May's Book Club Choice, as it's one of my absolute favourites and one I haven't revisited for such a long time now. I was named for the heroine of this story, and so it was the very first Jane Austen that I ever read, and it has remained my favourite. I think partly for the wonderful cast of supporting characters that Austen has developed in this book. Jane Austen's characterisation and dialogue in Emma is so witty and delightful. It's hard not to find reasons to smile when reading Emma. Whether it be over Mr Woodhouse and he's fussing over petty trifles, or Augusta Elton's insufferable pretentiousness and her nightlies and her mysteries. But it isn't only the charming characters that make Emma such a great read for me. I think it's the setting that makes this such a comforting book. The story largely avoids both London and Bath for the most part, with almost all of the action taking place in the sleepy village of Highbury and its immediate surroundings. Its focus is very much on the drawing rooms and the gardens of a small locale, which makes it very snug and intimate for the reader. I really enjoyed rereading Emma this month, and I hope that everybody else did too. Thank you so much, Miranda and Donna. Thank you so much, yes, Emma. Thank you, How Emma. lovely that you were named after this novel. Yes. <laughs> and I found your points about the setting so interesting. Mm. And Deb, being from Surrey as well, yeah. noticed that. And Jane Austen herself visited Surrey. She did. The, yes. I believe, did she have cousins? The Austens had cousins in yeah. Surrey. So she definitely knew the area, and I think the sort of Austen family legend said that Highbury is most likely based on Leatherhead in wow. Surrey, though no place no, it's probably quite a composite. matches. Yes, yes, yes exactly. Yes. Um, but Jane Austen most certainly would have gone up Box Hill herself, probably had the kind of picnic yes. excursion yes. that Emma has in the novel. So I think it's quite clear that she drew on her own experiences yeah. in this. But it is fascinating to realise that Emma is the Austen heroine who travels the very least out she of does. all she of does the actually, others. She does, actually, doesn't she? Yeah. She does. And another comfort book club member Penny from the United States called in and she mentioned noticing this as well Emma's lack of travel and how much she really remains just solely in Highbury so let's listen to Penny's message hi Miranda and Donna this is Penny from Colorado in the U.S. this was my second time to read Emma and it was sheer joy again it's funny to think Jane Austen had hesitations about writing a heroine who's a snob and might be misunderstood or disliked. Of course, the character Emma is incredibly entertaining and complex. The web of misunderstandings makes for delightful scenes filled with subtle comedy that turn to laugh out loud moments. Emma definitely helps to create this web because she relies too much on her own assumptions. The whole novel takes place in one small village with no real travels for Emma except the outing to Box Hill. All of Jane Austen's other novels have the heroine traveling to additional counties, villages, and even London. Yet I personally would rather be a fly on the wall in all the scenes of Emma than travel with the other heroines of Jane Austen's novels. She's my favorite author, and Emma is truly her masterpiece. All the characters in Emma are interesting. Different conversations and scenes stood out to me upon reading this novel for the second time. One example is the conversation between Mr. Weston and Mrs. Elton concerning the upcoming visit of Frank Churchill. It was really amusing. And the scene with Harriet and the gypsies grew even more humorous on the second reading, especially how her companion cleared the hedge and abandoned Harriet. Thank you for choosing, Emma. I love your channel and the Comfort Book Club. Oh, thank you, Penny, for your lovely message and yes, great thank observations. You, Penny. And yes, I think one thing that I noticed the most that really struck me on this reread of the novel, and I love the book because you notice something different every time you, do. you reread you it. Do. But what I really noticed on this reread was how restricted Emma is, how confined to home Absolutely. she is. It's extraordinary when you think of, she never really gets to travel to London, even to visit her sister. No, because Harriet Mr. Smith makes it to London. Yes, absolutely, yes. <laughs> because, of course, Mr Woodhouse doesn't like to go to London and she can't leave him alone. That's... No, exactly. Yeah. And 
you feel for her because you realise that though she has a very cheerful disposition yes. naturally and she also tries to always yeah. be cheerful she is dreading loneliness at the yeah. start of the book and one of the main reasons why she picks up with Harriet Smith initially is because it says she needs a walking companion yes. to Randall's she's tried to walk there by herself and she really didn't like the experience no no and I found that very interesting and there's almost a slightly claustrophobic feel yeah, to right. some of those domestic scenes and some of those sort of hybrid scenes, I feel. At the start of the book, when Mr Knightley comes and he has to pull away from Mr Woodhouse's very strong fire, yes, hot fire yes, on a warm evening. On a warm evening. He's breezing in, he's been to London, he's yeah. coming to find out about the wedding and give the news of Isabella and John. And the children, and he's just this breath of fresh air in every way, coming yeah. into the stuffy drawing room, living room, sitting room, whatever it is. Exactly. And you really feel that. You do. You get this picture of a sort of over hot room, stuffy room. Yeah. Emma always being so coddled. Yes, absolutely. Not allowing to really go anywhere by herself. No. Always mixing in the same society. There is a slight claustrophobic. There is, air and I think that. Mr. Knightley points out that really she's so intelligent mm -hmm. that her, she's like her mother her mother who died sadly when she was very young could have really helped Emma and maybe mm -hmm. given her better judgment and helped her understand she her positive things like self-assurance mm -hmm. can lead to being arrogant you know yes. this is and is the thing I think that the opening page of Emma is one of the best openings in any book because Jane Austen really sets up what's going to happen throughout the novel in this first page. She presents you with Emma as this very confident yeah. um, person who has a lot of good qualities, but also some bad qualities, yes. some real faults. And she sounds a warning bell because she says, the real evils indeed of Emma's situation with the power of having rather too much her own way and a disposition to think a little too well of herself. These were the disadvantages which threatened Alloy to her many enjoyments. The danger, however, was at present so unperceived that they did not by any means rank as misfortunes with her. Well, you know from that yes. that Emma's she, going to have, those have a few lessons taught to her yes. in the book. And that's exactly what happens. And how interesting is it to think, though, of how much of Emma's um, very confined existence contributes to her naivety. Oh, absolutely. I feel that she is completely naive in so many ways. For a very quick-witted, intelligent mm -hmm. young woman, yeah. she's also extremely stupid about people's behavior their yes. emotions yeah. yeah yeah she's been a very big fish in a very little yes, that's pond that's exactly right that's <laughs> and exactly right she feels a, you know a yeah. bit like she can take on a kind of god role and meddle in the lives the love lives of the people of highbury yeah, yeah. Um, because she does have a very good opinion of her own judgment of yeah. human nature how much of it, too, is that she is a bit bored? Yes. You know, she is seeking yeah. to entertain herself. Yeah, I think so. She is a bit of a snob. Yeah. Um, and how much her fantasies around Harriet Smith are convenient for Emma to think that Harriet is, in fact, a gentleman's daughter and she would like to see Harriet married in a way that would completely justify Emma's friendship with her in Emma's eyes. Because she is a bit of a snob herself. She is. She is. She definitely has her faults. Yes. Um, but I think it's interesting. Jane Austen had a you know famous quote about writing yeah. Emma, and she said that in writing Emma, she was creating a heroine whom no one but herself would much like. Well, I, I, I find that hard to agree with in so many ways because it, that opening paragraph. 
sets it up so you know oh well she might be a little bit too fond of her own opinion now but she's gonna have some lessons yes. and you can't help liking emma at least yeah. i can't no i yeah. i agree but one of our listeners Raffaella from italy uh phone uh, sent a voice message um talking a bit about this that uh, even though emma has her faults Raffaella, at least i think found finds her likable yeah. too as do we Ciao Miranda and Donna and everyone joining the Comfort Book Club. Such a lovely choice this month. Emma and Spring go so well together. To me, Emma is one of those books that gets better and better with every reread. Grows on you and in my case grew with me. Full of anecdotes and quotes highlighting her wit, her way to face life with curiosity yet annoying. She has an attitude, we can all see that. But funnily enough, it's because of that attitude that we've all grown to love her. A masterpiece. Thank so you, Raffaella. Yes, I love that. She does have yes, a bit of an attitude. She does. But I think some of her faults are so human. We can yeah. recognise ourselves in Emma, or at least I yes. know I can, with yeah. how she writes, draws up lists of books she wants to read, and then, you know, <laughs> it doesn't very get good lists. Yes, yes, very good list. Yes, very good list. Shows she has excellent taste, yeah. but isn't always very good at following yeah. through. Yep. I think we've all been like that I in think our so. time. Yes. But it's interesting, I think, too, to compare Emma to Elizabeth Bennet, for instance. It is, it is. I found it interesting how Emma was nervous of walking on her yes, own. Yes, so different from Elizabeth Bennet. So different from Elizabeth. But they both learn and grow a lot throughout yeah. the course of the novels. Elizabeth, too, has to learn that her judgment isn't always right. Absolutely. And Elizabeth has the advantage of coming from a big family. She has a very close mm-hmm. sister. It's a little bit different. Emma's so much alone, I feel. Yes, you know? I agree. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, so in Pride and Prejudice, there's a real theme of being too prejudiced in favour of your own judgment, your own opinions of other people. And I think in Emma, Jane Austen explored this theme a lot more more deeply. Yes, yes. Yes, that's the main theme in Emma, really. And I think as you read Emma... At first, as the reader, you're much more willing to really just see things through Emma's eyes. You are. And then as the novel progresses, you realise more and more that her perception of the world around her is distorted. Yes, she's She isn't always right. No, she isn't. (laughs) By a long shot. (laughs) No, no. (laughs) Um, And Jane Austen hints at this too in the way that she uses so many riddles word play yes absolutely puns in absolutely. the book and jason from new zealand uh, spoke about this a little bit in the the famous riddle scene yeah. with emma and harriet so let's hear jason's message hello this is jason from new zealand jane austen would have made a great psychologist And indeed, my favourite theme in Emma centres around the fact that we can be surprisingly blind to our own as well as other people's thoughts and emotions. Do you remember that funny scene where Emma reads out Mr Elton's word puzzle, which says, My first displays the wealth and pomp of kings, lords of the earth, their luxury and ease. Another view of man my second brings, behold him there, the monarch of the seas. Harriet Smith thinks the riddle is referring to a trident, a mermaid, or even a shark, which, by the way, always makes me laugh. Emma informs Harriet that the riddle is actually referring to a courtship, specifically Mr. Elton's courtship of Harriet. But Jane Austen is playing a masterful trick on the reader and on Emma herself because it turns out that Mr. Elton is interested in Emma and not Harriet. For me, the motto in Emma is contained in the jewel of a sentence uttered by Mr. Knightley, which says... If I loved you less, I might be able to talk about it more, but you know what I am. Reading Emma reminds me that situations in life can often be a little disguised, and we can get things wrong, and so the remedy comes from directly expressing genuine actions and emotions from our hearts. Miranda and Donna, thank you both for recommending this iconic and timeless book. Oh, thank, oh, you, thank Jason. you, Jason. Yes, and um, such great points there too. Yes. 
And yes, that's all uh, such an important theme in Emma. It's a yeah. book full of misunderstandings. It is. Often very comic. I remember the first time when I was very young, I read that. It was the humour of it that impressed yes. me the most, you yes. know? Yes, And then later on you realise, oh... Yes. Yeah, I know. But yes, yeah. there's so much humour. I mean, the proposal scene from Mr. Elton is And again, is you hilarious. know, so claustrophobic. They're in yes, that stuck trapped, trapped in that carriage. carriage. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. I know there's a real theme of claustrophobia in a way in yeah. the book, which is interesting. Very yeah. confined spaces. But also this idea, it's not just Emma who gets things wrong and who um, is fooled sometimes. Yeah. Or you realise... Everyone has a tendency yes. to want to view the world in a particular way yes. and in a way that suits them. them Mr. Everyone. Elton wants to believe that Emma's yes. been encouraging him. Yes, absolutely. Um, Emma wants to believe that Mr. Elton loves Harriet Smith. Yes, yes. Um, Mr. and Mrs. Weston want to believe that Frank Churchill yeah. and Emma will make a match. Yeah. Everyone in the book apart maybe from Mr Knightley but even he is a bit um, his vision is coloured when it comes to Frank and Churchill. And I think Jane Fairfax who let's face mm -hmm. it has, has had the most real sense of what it's like to go out into the world yes. and, and she's in a much more vulnerable position than any of yeah. the other characters really. Yes you know? exactly Yeah, and it's interesting that you really don't get her thoughts no. in the book much she no. is described as such a reserved character and you really don't break that barrier No, no. Uh, which is interesting but yes I think so many people uh, in the book misunderstand each other. Yes. And I love the way that some of this misunderstanding does come up, like we were saying, through riddles, yeah. through word games. You Even know, the, the names of the characters, like Knightley. Exactly. Yes. I mean, yes. to me... Um, Emma fantasizes about Harriet in such a way. Yes. She almost makes up this sort of fairy yes, tale around yes, Harriet. Yes, she as does. The illegitimate daughter it's of like you know. She's read one of these romances, gothic romances of the time, exactly. isn't it? Yeah. But to me, the more fairy tale like character in the book is Emma. She's yes. a bit like a princess trapped in the castle yes, you know, in, in the tower, tower exactly waiting for her knight to come yes. and of course he does yes, he's there all the time <laughs> yeah. it takes him and her a while yeah, yeah exactly but yes his name yeah um is is perfect for that and i think why this is such a great book to reread is you pick up on those puns. You pick up on some of those little hints that Jane Austen she drops. She lays all the way along, actually. You're so right. It is one of my favourite books to reread because some, sometimes it just takes ages, but then you suddenly see, oh, my goodness, there's another clue. Exactly. Yeah. Like I think at one point, Frank Churchill, I don't know if it's... He's saying he can't dance with Mrs Elton or something. Something and he's like, I'm already an engaged man. <laughs> and of course, on a reread, yes. you see that sentence yes. very differently. Yes. And yes. I think there are all these little hints from Jane yeah. Austen. And that's why Emma has been described many times as a detective story yeah. without a murder. Yes. yes. And I'm interested in, in your view on that yes. as well, if you yeah. agree with that. Um, I think there is a lot of truth to that. She does lay out all these clues which when you go back and you reread the book you really see them coming there are all these hints dropped as to yes. frank churchill and jane fairfax absolutely and, and frank churchill is an active deceiver like he deliberately yeah. wants to um hide what's and going obscure on the and truth obscure, yeah. yes he yeah. does yeah. Um, but yes, I think that's why it's one of the best of her books yes. to reread. Yes. It's really fun to look out. So many red clues. herrings, too. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Just like a detective story. Well, like that whole bit about, well, he is a bit vain, Frank Churchill, like going to London to get his hair done. And then the first time you read it, and then you think with Mr. Knightley, wow. And then you realize, yeah. you know, on the second we read, oh, of course not. You know, yeah, he went to the order piano the piano. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know exactly. You just yeah. pick up on those yeah. things which it's such a layered book yeah. which I think is absolutely fantastic yeah. um, but I would say there are two sort of main relationships in some ways in mm. the book revol uh, involving Emma yeah one is her relationship with Harriet yes. Smith absolutely I agree with that which is 
a very interesting friendship yeah. and one that really very nearly ends in utter disaster. Yeah. And Emma treats Harriet more like a sort of doll she can play with. Yes, yes, she um, does. Than, and than Knightley says right at the beginning, I don't see anything good of coming no. of this. But then by the end, he realises there has been... Some good, yes, yes. but it's been yeah. <laughs> a bit yeah. iffy. Um, and then another very important relationship with Emma is with her father. Oh, that's a very interesting It one. is. This mm. is often a relationship that really can divide readers because I think people have very different opinions yeah. when it comes to Mr. Woodhouse. And... You, for instance, don't like Mr. Woodhouse no, at I all. No, I loathe him. I absolutely, I think he's one of the most selfish gentlemen. But mm. other people see it very differently, and I can see that. Why? What annoys me is he's always treated so comically in films. And although there is, of course, some comedy in in his faults, I guess. Yeah. They, I, I, I really think we would have all been loathing being given the bowl of gruel. I'm very grateful for Emma to pass us the nice, yes. <laughs> the nice things on the yes. side. Fill, fill our wine glass yes, rather yeah, than yeah. pour water into <laughs> yes. it. Yes. Um, but yes, yeah, so some of our comfort book club readers phoned in and um, with sharing some of their opinions and, and some comic Mr. ideas too. and some comic yes. ideas so Shelley saw Mr Woodhouse as really quite an endearing family figure on her reading of the book so let's play her message this is Shelley from the USA hello Miranda I'm Shelley from upstate New York it's been years since I read Emma so thank you for the prompt to read it again this time, I was struck by how affectionately Austen writes of Emma's family with all of their idiosyncrasies and foibles. She could have reduced Mr. Woodhouse to a selfish hypochondriac or Emma to a martyr to duty, but Mr. Woodhouse is also a gentleman who adores his family. They all love the grandchildren. The Knightley brothers throw them up in the air and catch them and roughhouse with them. Emma walks around holding her baby niece. Mr. Knightley actively lobbies to have his little nephews stay with him. It's this functional, happy family full of really imperfect men and women. Thank you again for the Comfort Book Club. <laughs> Thank you, Shelley. Yes, and um, it's true. There are some really lovely, happy domestic scenes yes, very in much. the book that very much. sort of contrast with some of the more claustrophobic yeah. scenes. And I enjoyed on this rereading, really noting how much of a family man Mr. Knightley yes. is too. And there's some real foreshadowing yes. going on there. Yes. The way he and Emma make up while Emma's holding a baby in yes. her arms. Yes, and yes, And he clearly is a man who would be a very good father. Yes, and Emma, a good mother. I mean, you could tell that she, she loves her, her nieces and nephews. Yes. And she really enjoys. But she's also very aware. I mean, I think you realise that Isabella, mm -hmm. her sister, is not her intellectual equal. No, you know, exactly. So, but there's a lot of warmth and affection. There is. There. Yes. And John and Mr Knightley. Yeah, are, George Knightley. Yes, mm -hmm. are still obviously very close. Yes, yes. And in I that reserved Englishman way, way which yes, I think yes. Jane Austen did very wittily. Yes. Uh, but Teresa really brought out some of the humour yeah. of Mr Woodhouse in her message which really had us chuckling yeah. so let me play Teresa's message now this is Teresa from England hello Donna and Miranda it's Teresa from Mersey Island in Essex I was so delighted to have an opportunity to reread Emma for the book club I loved Emma as a character imagine my dismay however on finding myself strongly identifying with Mr. Woodhouse. Excuse me a moment. I can feel a terrible draught here. I must move. And the book, how heavy. I'm sure it's aggravating my arthritis. I'll sit at a table. Now my neck hurts. I'm sorry, it just won't do. I can find no comfort at all in this month's read. Oh, Jane Austen, how you manage to keep surprising your readers is a mystery. But I adore reading you. Thank you both for a wonderful choice. And happy reading to all. Bye.
Oh, thank, thank you, you, Teresa. Thank you, Teresa. That was so well done. Yes, very, very much the comic side. I loved it. <laughs> yes, yeah. exactly. And really, I think that just leads on to saying how brilliant Jane Austen is at creating these characters that feel so human. So human, so real. Yes, yeah. really real to the reader even nowadays, because they are flawed, they yeah. have their foibles, yeah. there is the ridiculous yes. in them, like with Miss Bates as well. Absolutely, yes, yes. And I think Emma is one of my favourite heroines in the end, because she is so flawed. Yes, but she's so human. I think this is it, isn't it? You just You just appreciate the way she's so roundly drawn exactly mm. and i think we can all see a bit of ourselves yes in emma oh in many of the characters yeah <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah. but yes jane Austen is so brilliant at writing flawed but very very real characters and naomi from england spoke about this a little in her message so let me play that one now hello miranda and donna this is Naomi from England. Emma is one of my favourite Austen books. I love the witty writing, wonderful characters and hilarious situations. I love the scene where Mr Elton proposes to Emma in the carriage and Harriet despairing of ever solving Mr Elton's riddle always makes me laugh. Austen was so good at creating very real characters, faults and all, Despite Emma's interfering, convinced she knows best, I find her so endearing with her optimism and good intentions. I really feel for her when she realises towards the end how she has misunderstood everyone's heart, including her own. Thankfully, Austin gives us a happy ending for everyone. Oh, thank you, Naomi. Yes, thank you so much, Naomi. That was lovely. Yes, it really was. And you're right, it's so lovely how everyone does get a happy ending. ending. And I think that Emma grows so much in the book. She does, um, doesn't she? Even yeah. though she has flaws, she manages to come to a much better understanding yeah. of herself. And I love how some of that is shown in a bit of the name puns in the book absolutely you know emma goes from living at hartfield where <laughs> she can't understand the riddles of her own no, heart no. let alone anyone else's to eventually ending up mistress of dunwell or well donwell yeah. or dunwell <laughs> yes, yes. abby where you yes. think she has done very well indeed yes, yes. <laughs> Even if it's going to gonna take there. her a while, probably she has to wait till Mr. Woodhouse pops off yes. um, to get there. <laughs> she will get there eventually. Such a sign of love from Mr. Knightley. Oh, that, that is one of the most romantic in. gestures, it isn't is, it? It is, isn't it? I mean, that is true love. It is. That he actually <laughs> moves in with with Mr. Woodhouse yes. so that, you know, she won't have to worry. And, of course, that it's some fox in the... Oh, no, it's it's thievery in the neighborhood taking the chickens he thinks isn't yes it? so he wants a man about the house yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. <laughs> oh, but yes i think emma just she does grow so much as a character she becomes a much nicer person yeah. by the end of it she's a lot less snobbish yes a person absolutely too and you feel with mr knightley's influence yeah that she will become even less of a snob. Yes. I mean, it's interesting you pointed out to me about how Robert Martin was accepted at the, yes. at the Knightley's dinner table well, in London. in London, yes, and absolutely. So when Harriet goes up, she meets him again, and that's mm. when he proposes and is accepted. And you think, oh, yes, like he, that wouldn't happen in conservative Highbury. It's obviously the mm. country. They're a bit behind with the times. I do feel with Jane Austen, though, she... She nods to the change, but she also maintains the status quo. Yes, she's not yeah. um, sort of breaking boundaries or no, in no, that way. No. But I think there is maybe a little bit of um, yes. slyness going yes, on yes. there, um, she's sly showing. subversion going yeah. on there, because she does make the reader question Emma's judgment, yeah. question Emma's snobbishness, yeah. and... 
so she doesn't do it in an, in an open or obvious way, no, but no. I think her writing is a little subversive. It is. But I yes, agree. it's not breaking any big uh, boundaries there, no. but still. Uh, but then finally, our reader from Spain, Christina, uh, sent a lovely voice message all about how people can change and how Emma changes for the better in this book. So let's play her message. Good afternoon, Miranda, Donna, and all the members of the Comfort Book Club. In a world that everything seems to be like, love yourself first, believe in you, eliminate what you don't like from your life, empower yourself to create the life you want, etc., etc., here it comes a wonderful novel which invites you to quite the opposite. It invites you to better yourself. Apart from being a fabulous story, romantic, intelligent, hooking, full of passion, Elma's behavior from the beginning to the end demonstrates that a person can change and can change their life if there is perseverance and good guidance. Thank you, Miranda and Donna, because I had always been obsessed with Pride and Prejudice, and I have to recognize that I had never read this amazing and touching novel. Thank you very much again. Oh, thank you, Christina. Thank you, Christina. That was lovely. Yes, and a lovely message to end yeah. on. I think, yes, Emma does indeed um, make you think about not judging other people yeah. too harshly. Yes, recognising your own faults. Exactly. Yes, yes. And always striving to be yeah, a better maybe person. Maybe I shouldn't loathe Mr Woodhouse quite so much. <laughs> Um, but also how lovely to end with a message from someone who read Emma for the first time for this It was really club. nice, wasn't it? Yes, that really yeah. makes us very happy. It does. We love to spread the love of Emma yeah. and Jane Austen. So yeah. that was really wonderful. But thank you so much to everyone who read along with us this month and especially to those who sent in a voice message. Yeah. Thank you for contributing to the discussion. And now I just have the upcoming Comfort Book Club picks to tell you about for the summer. Exciting. <laughs> <laughs> you already know about A Sky Painted Gold by Laura Wood. That is June's choice that was announced ages ago. And then July's choice, I have to get a physical copy of the book because I only have it on Audible right now. And that is Joy in the Morning by P.G. Woodhouse, which is one of both of our very yes, favourite Jeeves and Worcester yeah. stories. We really love this one and it's just so funny, perfect for summer. Yeah, absolutely. So a lovely light summery read. And then August's choice is Father by Elizabeth von Arnim. This is set almost entirely in August and it's mm. also a very funny book. So some nice light, light summer reading, summer reading yes. ahead. Yeah. So really looking forward to those. But yes, thank you so much again to everyone who read along with us in May. I hope you enjoyed Emma as much as we did. Mm -hmm. Big thanks again to all of you who sent in voice messages. Um, we'll be back again next week. But thank you so much to everyone who pressed the super thanks button on last week's video which both of us yes. did actually <laughs> um it was really appreciated it's it makes, wonderful thank you yeah it makes such a big difference but thank you to everyone who gives my videos a thumbs up or who shares them or supports this channel by subscribing i really appreciate all of the different types of support but I'll be catching up on comments soon too. I've had a really, really busy week, so it's just been very hectic, but I'll be catching up as soon as possible. And we'll be back again next week. I hope you have a wonderful weekend ahead. Goodbye. Bye-bye.